as you all know, I'm not always here because Wednesday is my work day, so I intentionally file a leave for this <laughs> because Pastor Jim is very persistent to me. <laughs> so I cannot escape, so. One year in the making. <laughs> Four hours. <laughs> All right. <coughs> so this is my first time to do this, so I take my privilege to, and challenge to grow my faith in Jesus to, upon doing this. So start with, um, I would like to raise a question to all of you. Do we have all faith? Most probably all of you. I say yes. So I'd like to ask a question. What is the level of your faith now? Is it growing? Is stagnant? Or maybe somehow you don't know. But it's okay. Because tonight, I would like you to journey with me as we grow our faith together. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Please lead us by your Holy Spirit tonight as I deliver the message from the faith, message about the faith in Jesus. May you open our hearts and mind and be ready to accept and obey your word so that it will increase our faith in Jesus. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So what is faith? I'm, uh, I was searching for the simplest definition of faith, and I come out of this one. It is a complete trust and confidence of something or someone. As we all know, all human beings have faith. Why? It's because we need to accomplish something in our lives to make decisions and choices. Without faith, we don't trust anyone or any person or even to yourself. All, of, all you have is doubt. And then you will end up Miserable and accomplish nothing in his life. So going back to my question, do we have all have faith? Yes, of course, we have all have faith, believers and non-believers. But the question is, what is the basis of your faith? What is the object of your faith? Faith in what? Some has faith in themselves, some has faith in what they have, some has faith with their wealth, the money, and some has faith on people and everything what he has, he has, and so on. So faith basically based on the object of your faith. As believers in Jesus Christ, the object of our faith is Jesus Christ of his word and his promises. I will share to you the bibli biblical definition of faith. I'll bring you to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about the things we do not see. In other words, faith is an assurance of what we hope for but have not yet received. What do we hope for in Jesus Christ? We hope, we hope that God is trustworthy and fulfill his promises. We can be sure of his promises of salvation, eternal life, having a resurrected body that be ours someday. 
based on who God is in His Word and His promises. Every one of us has a unique experience when we, when we come to Christ. Some respond to His love, some in His mercy, some of His judgment. But we have one thing in common. We undergo in the problems of life. We cannot escape of this one. That's why God uses these problems, this crisis in our lives. Why? So that we will be drawn to Him and grow our faith in Jesus. God wants us to have a deeper relationship with Him. Not like, just, just like if you have a problem, go with Him and that's it. Give him the like a grocery list, and then after that, bye bye. Most of our faith begins with a uh, with crisis in our lives, but God honors that kind of faith, that kind of beginner faith. God always answers that kind of faith. It's because He wants us to have a relationship with Him and have a faith in Jesus. But it is dishonoring to God if we stay on that crisis mode of faith, meaning we will just pray hard when crisis comes along our way, and then once that crisis is over, we just relax, less attention to God and Maybe a passive prayer. God wants us to grow our faith in Jesus, to fully trust in His word and promises. Tonight I will share with you the five steps on how to grow our faith in Jesus. I have uh, five steps here. Step one. Crisis faith. Step two, continuing faith. Step three, confident faith. Step four, confirmed faith. And step five, contagious faith. So tonight, I will share with you my personal experience on how I have this faith in Jesus. So before that, I would like to say to this day, the reason why we have few believers that has a contagious faith, it's because most of so many believers who lives on a crisis faith, they only stay on a crisis. They will go to God if crisis comes. This one sa saying here is that it is hard to believe because it is hard to obey. I will, I will repeat this. It's hard to believe because it is hard to obey, obey the word of God. To begin with, I would like to share with you the story of my faith that is formed from a crisis faith. I experienced suffer of financial loss, through investing of most of my money on real estate way back 2018. Through that experience, I, humbled, I, I was humbled down and lost my joy because that investment does, did not work. Until I surrendered to Jesus and the Holy Spirit opened my spiritual eye that through, that through the faith in Jesus and in Jesus alone can provide us real peace and contentment in life. So my crisis faith has made it through to a contagious faith. So tonight I will share it with you how I did come to that kind of faith. 
So two years from before from the pandemic, as I said before, I invested most of my money to to buy a real estate, a land, a piece of land. I just buy the rights of it, and then later on I will sell sell it to gain profit. But when pandemic comes, it starts late to 2019. That's so it came out early 2020. That investment is, go, is gone. It's because through that pandemic, everything is uncertain. People will not invest, will not buy. So everything is holding what they have because we don't know the future. So that's my crisis begin because that sum of money was intended to buy a car for my family. So with that experience, I suffered great emptiness in my life that leads me to very serious anxiety. I can't sleep. Sometimes I cry for no reason. Filled with guilt, regret, fear, worried, worried, restless and disoriented and shame. So how I how how did I continue with this faith? So we will go to step two. We call it continuing faith. To give you a background, before I come to Christ, I was a Catholic. My faith is uncertain. I can describe my faith as like a spaghetti faith. It's very tangled. Because my faith is li relies on lots of things. Doing good works, go to mass, pray a rosary, taking communion. But when somebody is asking me, doing that, are, are you going to be saved? But my answer is no. I just hope so. I hope so. I'm not sure. Because my object and foundation of my faith is not anchored in Jesus. It's anchored of lots of things. Jesus is there, but just a partial of it. So that's why every time somebody will ask me, I'm still I'm saying, I hope so. My faith was based on legalism and some false teaching which is not in the Bible. Being on that kind of situation, I don't know where to lean on during that crisis in my life. But that great emptiness in my heart leads me to seek the truth. And I read this quote from somebody that it said, if you want to increase your faith, you must consent or accept to the testing of faith. So with that problem with mine, of mine, God humbled me with my pride, made me broken, and made me, made me realize that I, ha I have an idol in my life. I trusted God with other things except with my money. I did not trust God and he, that He will supply with all my needs. Through that situation, I, that transformed me and healed me and lead me, lead me to surrender everything to Jesus where only Jesus can fill our voids or emptiness in our life. 
So I surrendered myself to Jesus. So I go through now to the confident faith. So during that time, I know, I know some about God's promises in the Bible, but not serious about it. Especially I'm just a, I can call myself a baby Christian. So Bible is not, before Bible is not part of my habit of reading or something. But I know tithing. I learned that, that tithing in my previous Catholic organization where they promote tithing, but I'm not so serious about it. I did it somehow, sometimes, but it's not consistent but not practicing anymore when I came here in Australia. And then later on, the Holy Spirit reminds me about, about it. So that's why I understand that He allowed me to undergo this kind of crisis because I was blind of other things. To remind me that I am very far from Him. So the Holy Spirit brings me to the to the scripture about the two passages. First in Luke chapter 6 verse 38. And it says that give and it will be given to you good measure pressed down shaken together running over will be put into your lap for with that with the measure you use it will be measured back to you if you give back to God like the crumbs of what you have God will give you crumbs if you give back to God what is due to him he will give more than what you gave you cannot outgive with God. And the second one is in Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. And it says, Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with, that, with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. These two passages brings me back to the real foundation of my faith. So I start doing this. I start going back doing this, believing and claiming to those of those promises. And there's one thing here I would like to share with you that someone said about faith. Faith is like a toothbrush. Everyone should have their own and use it regularly and renew it as needed. So my journey of my faith continues. So I go to the fourth one, confirm faith. So I started re religiously and Honestly, regarding with my tithes. So I started year 2020, not much of my money in a bank because of that loss. And since it is COVID, my wife has no work. Good thing that I still have work. I can remember my money in my bank is less than 5000 at least I can say there's a thousand in my money. <laughs> I have less on that time, but I have peace and happy giving in, in my tithes and offerings. 
that inner peace I experience is very, very inexplicable. <clears throat> Even my wife, during that time, cannot avail the job keeper. I hope you remember this one, job keeper. She cannot avail to that government support. It's because they required one year of residency of the job. She has only 11. So this kind of thing is really, really tested me. But having this kind of peace in my, in my heart, to have less is not my focus anymore. It's like I have a great peace in myself, in my heart, because Jesus assures me that he will not leave me or forsake me. I can remember with my wife upon knowing that sh she cannot avail a job keeper. I just say a short prayer. I can remember uh, by saying, God, just a little bit. And I'm happy. With this, I would like to share with you what happened. What happened to this crisis in my life after I received Jesus as my Savior and I surrendered to Him. In 2020, 2020 is very, very memorable to me because these things happened to me, but the great things happened to this year is if I, you ask me now, I cannot remember the crisis because I can remember always his blessing. First, my mortgage was paid in full, same year. I bought a brand new car, same year. And my wife got at least a job seeker. So this year is a very unthinkable, it's impossible to think. I cannot think how did it happen. But if you, if you claim the promises of God truly, honestly, not doubting, sure it will happen more than that. So I encourage the tithing thing is do it seriously. If you only give crumbs to God, don't expect He will bless you more. So I'm standing here as a witness to my faith, so I can consider this as a contagious faith. A con confident faith takes God at His word. A confident faith fully trusts in His promises. Confident faith believes without evidence. Confident faith does not doubt in the dark what God revealed in the light. God is a covenant-making, covenant-keeping God. God always fulfills His promises, and it is always and always on time. If you want to increase your faith, you must consent or accept the testing of faith. There is no testimony without testing of faith. Testimony of witnessing to Jesus is the evidence of your faith and to your salvation. Testimony, that's the word of testimony. Testimony will come out. 
testimony, they won the victory with the word of God and the word of the te testimony. If you keep silent and will not witness after God give good deed to you, the stones will cry out. Let us pray. Heavenly, heavenly and gracious God the Father, thank you for the gift of faith in Jesus. And thank you for your promises that you will not leave us nor forsake us. Forgive us in doubting in your promises in times of crisis in our lives. May you help us grow our faith in Jesus when we undergo the test of faith in our life so that we will be victorious, so that we will live in a victorious life and be ready to be a good witness to others and be the light of the world. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.